to Super Kitten Krista 64, we are about to go into the secret layer of digital eclipse. Are we ready? Hello! Whoa. Welcome to Digital Eclipse! His daughter and uh, their friends came in, I think, on a weekend. And day. just painted it? Gave them, gave them uh, I think, um, you know, uh, markers. Like, uh, markers and said, go, go, go crazy. Go crazy oh, and gosh. paint yeah, the floor. Yeah. Look at this. This is incredible. So here's the lobby. This is how you would actually come in for, like, you know, business reasons. Um, we don't actually have a receptionist or anything. And all this stuff is fake. <laughs> the plant is real. <laughs> plant, plant is real. Plant's real. But if, uh, if you were to actually look at the papers and things like that that were on the reception, oh. you'd realize it's all just... Uh, really? It's oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, no. It's, oh. it's fake. <laughs> no, it's... Well, I mean, they're, they're real papers from... Uh, from <laughs> the a, computer. Uh, Atari, sorry, that, yes. The Commodore like Pet. McDonald's. Like, little, little, like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I know. Eventually, somebody's going to work there, and we're going to have to get rid of all yeah, this Yeah, exactly. Until that day. So, um, in here's where a lot of the uh, Wizardry um, teams is. We have Wizardry, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord, the first game in the Wizardry series, which is on Early Access and Steam right now. Awesome. So the Wizardry team kind of hangs out around here. There's what a fun office. It is a fun office. Here, like, I felt like I had to represent. Right. I saw so <laughs> many cool things on everybody's desk. I'm like, nobody's got an Umjammer and Laramie guitar. I'm bringing an Umjammer and Laramie guitar. That is yeah. the, you know. So I was like, what do I have? Sounds like you're a guitar hero super fan. Are you what, a guitar hero well, so fan? So I, worked on, I worked at Activision for okay. uh, four years, and then I worked on the Rocksmith team at Ubisoft. So... And before that, I was at Guitar World magazine. So, so I, I actually about Dan actually did both you sides did. of I'm not sure guitar we have and ever gaming. Met, met, but I attended a electronic arts event that you performed at. Oh, you were ago, there! Oh my, my was, '80s cover band, which was incredible. Thank you. You have an so, '80s cover band. I did a while ago. I I, I still That's make so music cool. now, but yeah, we got right. hired. It was about three weeks after I left Game Pro. Uh, so super this would, this would awkward. Like, oh, 2003? Three or four, yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh, right. that's so right. amazing. Yeah, we got hired to play uh, uh, an EA gig, and it was it was pretty awesome, but it was bizarre just seeing all my coworkers out there with a beer they'd never seen <laughs> yeah. before. Are we going to continue with yeah, the yeah, right. Right. Sure. yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll end up sure, we'll be back. Yeah, yes. good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, down that way lies nothing interesting. What is visually. this, though? Um... This is the studio. This is the uh, the, the podcasting uh, studio when we oh, podcast. Wow. podcast. Um, this is oh, yeah yeah. yeah. So we we, we, we we will occasionally do digital clips. We have a, we have a podcast that we don't really do. You know, occasionally we'll come down <laughs> and do it. We do a lot of streaming actually on the weekend. Oh, wow. streaming. But this then this is, really is great. But then this is also where we shoot interviews, like for Atari yes. 50 and Erotica. Oh, oh yeah. We shoot here in the office. Oh, we do it here. Oh, we okay. do it here. The Fairchild Video Entertainment System. What are you doing back there? <laughs> like you're like looking uh, at someone else's like inside yeah. the purse or something. <laughs> Look at these pictures. <laughs> Oh, that, oh, oh, the Fairchild VES picture. So this was the first, I mean, this was the very first uh, game console to use cartridges. Oh, no. It's it's a baby. Wrong cartridges. And yes, they had these incredible, the baby's expression right. is The baby tremendous. doesn't look entirely Here's happy. Here's test. Do every expression on that box. Ready? Oh. Next. 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 <laughs> and finally... Okay. That's a that's a strange one. The the pilgrim woman. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to see you do these too. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh huh. And that's we'll, pretty good. A little flirty at the end. That's yeah. Pretty good. That's I don't know why they have these like sort of like uh, angry or bored expressions. I <laughs> yeah. think it was just like it's going to run the whole gamut of human emotions. And yeah. age. Right. Yeah, yes. you got it. This is like the zero to nine. This is like a oh, there's a dog. <laughs> there's even a dog. <laughs> there's even a dog. <laughs> even your dog oh was blown away by the fair child. Oh, wow. yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah, incredible 1970s design. I know right? nothing about this. It was so, the first yeah. game system to use ROM cartridges. So oh. it was the first game console where you you know the game was not stored in the system and you would put a cartridge in to play it. But yeah, it looks like an eight-track player, right? Yeah, it does. Yep. It's yep. so cr- Look at these buttons. Oh, yeah. my God. And the, yeah, the, com- the controllers are stored underneath. Oh. oh. Yeah. The controllers were, like, hardwired. That is um, Oh, this is actually kind of, like, nice. You, this was pressing the button. You depressed it. It was oh, like a plunger a of dynamite, basically. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, sounds like it, like, it sounds like it feels good. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, give it a shot. It's just like you're, like, detonating some, like, dynamite or something. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Wally can do yeah. it again. Yep. <laughs> so, I, so I recognize this guy. Yes, you yes. do. Why don't you tell us? So this is Death Junior, and I actually worked on a Death Junior game oh. when I worked at Konami. So this is kind of like the legacy of this studio back when it was Backbone. And this was a PSP game, which was like kind of a hot game on the PSP. And uh, obviously got a sequel and worked on it. And... Um, what happened to? What happened? We need to more. We need to Death bring Junior. back Death Junior. I agree. I agree. What happened? Got to bring back Death Junior. Look at his face. It seems yeah, like a great character. Very cute. You know what? A lot of Death personality. Junior. Mm-hmm. Death Junior for Smash. That's there we go. There we go. That's how we bring back Death Junior. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. Perfect. I'm down. They pulled out the, some of the Llama Soft uh, games. Oh, oh wow. Good. Mostly, it's like. If somebody hands me something, that's what I'm going to have. Uh, Everything has a little story. Cassette tape? Cassette tape? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kids know about this. Yeah. Right. right. Well, that's the thing. So it's like it, initially it was like, oh, well, the games are on cassette tapes. But then it turns out that, like, the games really, they, they came in these sort of custom, mm. you know, which we, like, I had never seen anything like yeah. this before. That's nice. Um, right. So it's sort of halfway between a cassette tape case and, and like, a DVD oh, case or yeah. something like that. Yeah, right? Exactly. So we had to, we, we, we didn't. We didn't personally scan everything that's in the game because we worked with Jeff and we worked with um, a collector in the UK who scanned mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. Because to try to like buy copies of everything that was in the game would have been horrifically expensive yeah. and also impossible because oh. so many of them are so rare. But we just bought a few for for reference. So when our artist uh, Norm was like building the three D models of the cases, we know how to reference it. Like, oh, how big? Because yeah. when you see a picture of this online, you don't know how big it is. You know, mm-hmm. you might think there's like a VHS. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Teeny, when yeah. you look yeah. at it in person, it's yeah. Right. Since it is cassette, wow. it's mm-hmm. not much bigger than a normal cassette tape. Wow, this is amazing. Mm. Yeah. So, like, part of. So, what year was this? 84. So 83, 84. 83? Okay. 83 or 84. Wow. Um, 84. Wow. Wow. And you can't really necessarily even trust the date that's printed on there, like yeah. I said, how found out. Exactly. Because he might have written it and then put it together and then it didn't get published until later or something like that. So mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of Llamasoft was me like reading through old issues of British video game magazines yeah. and like looking at the Llamasoft ads and seeing like when does a game appear. And then, like, oh, okay, then you can sort of localize it to, like, well, it would, you know, mid-1984 is when Jeff yeah. started advertising that it was available. You know, just, wow. just stuff like that. That's so interesting. Yeah. Hey, who it is? <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Got my favorite game up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? It's one of my favorites. Would you say yeah. that's your favorite title screen? It, it is, actually. It is, actually. With the, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. wind blowing through. Got my, oh, yes. my phone. There it is. It's, oh, it's, yeah. on, it's on your phone. It's on every device I can put a wallpaper. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 yes.
you come in here and it's like, oh crap! If I like, you know, elbow the wrong thing, <laughs> yeah. it's all gonna come down. Up a domino. It's all gonna come down. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ten thousand right. dollars yeah. worth, of, worth right. of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So well, your, new, your new game's coming out yes. in a week. Oh my god! And yeah. Oh no! So <laughs> obviously, it's okay. obviously, the game's been done. But like, what right. is what is the studio focused on right now? That's uh, this. We are like we are like months and months deep into unannounced other new projects oh. because it's like that's the sort of like I hate to I hate to like up you know. Uh, flip over the tea table, yeah. as it were, and upset the premise of the whole video. But it's no. like um, we, you know, as far as like Llamasoft, I mean, we kind of finished, uh, you know, the vast majority of work on that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so it's weird when you know it's actually coming out because it's like, oh right, let me remember all the stuff that, you know that we did. Yeah. So this is going to be like the third entry in this new genre that you all created, which right. is basically an interactive uh, documentary. documentary. Yeah. And when I played the Atari mm. Gold Master Collection, I had just this feeling of, this is incredible, this is groundbreaking, like, I want a lot more of this. I'm wondering, like, before that game came out, did you all know that you were sitting on something really amazing? <laughs> Like, seriously. So, well, uh, no, because I think that we, okay, so... We've always, you know, we've, we've, we just always felt like we need to keep, um, you know, keep advancing the, the football, as it were. So every time we would do a new retro collection kind of thing with, mm -hmm. with digital clips, like, what can we do that's new? What can we do that's interesting? And how can we, like, put in more history? And for a long time, I think, when, uh, even prior to me kind of getting here, we'd be, you know, pitching publishers on, hey, let's really blow up the historical kind of aspect of this. And a lot of times, I think publishers have felt like, well, that's that sounds expensive. That sounds like it's going to take a lot of time. That sounds like it's like maybe let's just do it the you know the regular way yeah. because like that's all we really need. So we were very lucky um, with Atari Fifty because Atari, which did not own us at that time, but was you know a, a publisher that we were working with. Um, they needed something that was new and, and different. So we had been working actually on making of Karataka prior to that oh. and and working on this because that was something that was published internally. Mm -hmm. And so we could just do whatever we want. We didn't have a publisher saying, no, do it the other way. Mm. So it was like, this this is going to be the proof of concept for what we really want to do. And, you know, the term interactive documentary had kind of been bandied about. And so we were, you know, putting it together where... I mean, the kind of idea was rather than you jump in and like, here's a list of games. And so just pick a game and go play it. It was like, let's let's walk you through the history and let's integrate those games, you know, into the, the, the historical aspects of it um, so that everything is kind of in one experience. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys have a very just unique way of taking things that could be obscure to people. Mm -hmm. you know, when we played. Uh, making of Karataka, we we did not know anything mm -hmm. prior beyond to... Beyond the name. Right. Yeah, that yeah. was it. Yeah, right. beyond the name, we knew nothing about it. But we were both just incredibly, from the moment we started like going through the interactive documentary, we were just like sucked into it. Awesome. What is, <laughs> what is yeah. your like secret sauce and how you do that? Because that that's such an interesting thing because a lot of people have nostalgia for things and right, that's why right, they're right. interested in learning more. Yeah. But I really didn't have nostalgia for Karataka. But, <laughs> right. I was like, but at the end of that, that whole, you know, going through that whole thing, I was like, I'm so in on this. Mm -hmm. This guy's a genius. Like, this game is amazing. Well, we know that most people don't have any nostalgic attachment to Karataka or Jeff Minter's stuff. I mean, there are groups, there are the groups of people that do, but we have to reach more than that. And so that's sort of the idea behind this. And also, even with Atari, it's like, there's, people grew up in the 70s and early 80s with the Atari, but... You know, there's so many more people now, and it's like, how do we make this relevant? And and so from, I mean, you know, again, like I was in the media for you know almost almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I've that was sort of my job is like finding out about something cool and like how do I t tell somebody that something is so cool and, and yeah. tell them all about that. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's that's kind of what I applied, you know, to this. And of course, everybody, you know, as we as we had kind of said, a lot of people in here have you know that journalistic experience as well. So everybody kind of got on board with like, yeah, that's how, that's how we're going to, um, uh, you know, introduce people to things like that. And so that, that's sort of the idea. And, and really it's all about like, I'm looking for the story, right? I'm looking for the angle yeah. because, um, you can't just take all the facts and just sort of like lay all the facts out. Right. It has to be like, you know, narrative. it's the same thing. When you're, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. and, and what is narrative? It's like, where is the conflict? Like, where does our hero struggle? It's almost like equal parts making a game, but also making a movie. 
yeah. because you yeah. are telling that story and there mm-hmm. is that narrative arc and you have all of that you know, like original footage. I think even like with um, Karataka, there was like Jordan with his father was yes. this great I love that. heartwarming the piano. thing yeah. with the piano. Yeah. We knew we had, I mean, I, I hoped old. that we had something wonderful there. Yeah, what I know about Lamasoft is psychedelic shooters is kind of what comes to mind yeah. and I, that's really it with farm animals but that's i don't know what the connection to the farm animals <laughs> well, is he ha- seems like he I'm, ex- has I'm excited animals. to learn more yeah. But, yeah but but like i don't at this point like i don't need to know it's like i know this is going to be a fascinating story mm-hmm. and i'm gonna yeah. learn a lot right yes. right and again by putting it into the context that we put it into you see how his games develop you see the connections between the games you see why he decided to start working on this game versus another game and you just mm. you, you, you just and you also start to see you start to see how Jeff is in those games because it is just mm-hmm. his personal thing. Yeah. You also start to see that he made those games for himself to play. You know, I mean, yeah. fundamentally, his his number one audience is like himself <laughs> because he <laughs> he's inspired by other games. So he sees an arcade game. And he's like, oh, I have to go home and make my own version of that because I can make that better. Mm-hmm. I can get more sheep into this game. Yeah, I feel like um, obviously we're surrounded by just video game entertainment history while we're sitting in this office and your office is clearly that too and you were showing us like you were saying some of the um cassette tapes yeah. that the original llama soft games were on how do you deal with handling all of this kind of like historical information and historical material um well you know it's still kind of early days because so well first of all a lot of the stuff the historical archival material is like video games that were in my collection at home that we scanned or video games that were here in Mike's office that we scanned. Yeah. We have been, there are things that we need to go out and buy. Uh, and right now that's just like a small drawer by my desk. That's just full of like Atari games and Llama soft games and stuff like mm-hmm. that. that We've had to purchase. We haven't really gotten to the point yet where we feel like we need some sort of a formal system to yeah. <laughs> catalog all yeah. of it. Yeah. We could probably reach out to our friends at the video game history. They're Foundation downstairs. For, <laughs> all good. Yes. for help doing Literally that. At some point. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you, mm-hmm. do you feel any sense of like, obligation or urgency to play this role in game preservation obviously you're a company you need to release product for Mm -hmm. people to sell but it seems like you are one of the main players of creating these enduring pieces yeah of you know developers who are either about to you know age out or games that Mm -hmm. are about to become Mm -hmm. inaccessible like how how does the studio feel like as is this like your mission going forward Mm -hmm. i mean yes i think we i we, we absolutely have that feeling of um we are losing stories, you know, we are losing people, we are losing games, so much of this stuff, it's like, you know, just just due to entropy, like, we are just losing it, losing it, losing it. Now, we can't solve that problem, like, nobody can totally solve that problem. That problem is not able to be solved by, it's like, but, it's like, we can do what we can, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it, it... to do a, you know, just doing an official release of something like Karataka, it just takes, I mean, it just, it takes a ton of, of time and, mm-hmm. and money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it takes, it took all those very talented people to put together something like mm-hmm. that. We can't do that for every video game that's out there. We have to pick and choose. Um, so there's only really so much that we can do, but we are absolutely focused on, it's like, when we, when the, when those stars align, when that project happens it's like do do the absolute best job we can on that because there might not be a second bite at that app yeah right right okay we are just leaving digital eclipse going back over the bridge um that was amazing honestly like it makes me want to one redecorate our office (laughs) two i can't wait to play mama soft and learn more about jeff minter and his farm animals i mean at this point, like you said, we're just in on everything they do, so it doesn't matter. We're going to play, yeah. and it's going to be great. Yeah, and I just think we're very lucky to have a chance to go inside a studio, right. you know, as they're getting ready to launch their game, and see so many amazing things, and talk to so many amazing people, and yeah. to share it with all of you. Exactly. That's the best part. That's the best part. We hope to do more of these on Super Kit and Krista 64. All right, we are going to wrap it up. We hope that you check out Lamasoft, the Jeff Minter story as well. Put the links in the description on, on how you can learn more about that. But that game is out now. So we hope that you check it out. And we will talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.